All right, so we are going to see what kind of birds we can find today, and what is this guy doing? Oh. You need a lift? Yeah. Where are you going? Looking for some road birds. Get in. Recently, our birding luck hasn't been great, and we've missed seeing the last few rarities that we've targeted, all of them being over two hours away. Depressed. Hello. I uh, have a new nemesis bird. It's the Barrow's Golden Eye, and I feel like we're never going to see one because we somehow miss on it every time. We missed on male and female. We missed though. on male and female, so we're clearly, it doesn't matter what gender it is, we can't find it trying to keep my spirits up. As a result of our recent misses, we're taking some time to appreciate some more common winter species closer to home. Our search is taking us to western Waukesha County to look for three species of birds that can be found on the roadside near agricultural fields. Our three target species are Lapland longspurs, horn larks, and snow buntings. All three of these species can be found flocking together along the roadsides. On the way, we noticed a winter visitor perched up in a tree. I think we have see? a rough-legged hawk here. We do. We passed it. We passed it, and now we... Oh, there he goes. Oh, yeah. I'll try to zoom in on him. Rough-legged hawks frequent Wisconsin in the winter and are named for their legs that are feathered all the way to their toes. They normally occur in a light and a dark morph. After getting a glimpse of the hawk, we headed down to the road with the agricultural fields on both sides. We observed some crows along the way, and then started looking for our target species. This is the road where we had a lot of bird flocks last time, and they were in the field and on the road feeding on what looked like manure that was spread. And we'll see if anything is remaining here now that it looks like some of the fields have kind of melted a little. She's not seen much at all yet. Not yet, but you can sometimes get to a place where there's just a big flock, so we'll have to see what we can get. As we cruised the road, one of our target species decided to make an appearance, the snow bunting. Okay, we stumbled upon a snow bunting. Oh, he's oh, he's flying backwards. I hate when they do that. I know. <laughs> oh, he went down. We parked the car and carefully got out to view the single snow bunting. It's odd he's by himself because normally they flock in these big groups with Lapland longspurs and horn larks. And horn lark are actually the most abundant bird out here, so it's cool that we got a snow bunting first. The snow bunting can be found in the United States in large flocks during the winter months. They flock in the hundreds and their plumage changes between breeding and non-breeding seasons to perfectly blend in with their surroundings. During breeding season in the high arctic, they are mostly black and white, which helps them to blend in with the rocky crevices and snow where they breed. The rock crevices where the nests are made get very cold in the up to negative 22 degree temperatures, and females must constantly sit on the nest. Males will bring them food almost every 15 minutes. In winter, when they migrate south, they acquire caramel-colored tones, which can range from minimal to being a full hood extending down the back on some birds. These color changes help them blend into the fields where they forage for seeds, insects, and arachnids. In areas like these where there's road and then agricultural field on both sides, the birds are attracted here because when the plows come through, they'll leave some of this area where it's uh, exposed either manure or there's some corn left over, things that birds like to eat. So when the snow comes down, all this is covered up and they would have to pick through it if they want to get food, but the plow conveniently makes it open so they can come and, and get food. So when you're driving down these roads, keep an eye on the sides, you'll get the uh, horn lark, lapland longspurs, and snow buntings, but also sometimes tree sparrows. Areas where there's some trees right by the road, that's where the more of the tree sparrows and birds that like to roost up there will hang out as well. So a lot of stuff to find here by the agricultural fields. After seeing the snow bunting, we continued to cruise the roads, passing several barnyard animals. 
Eventually, we were able to locate our other target species. <laughs> Everything's happening right now. There's some stuff in the road, and it is... Can I get a drum roll? Hornlarks! We got hornlarks. No long spurs, though? Um, I mean, I just saw, like, real quick, we have to get up a little closer, because my windshield is blurry. I hear a lot of stuff chirping, too. There's cardinals out here. This is a good area. There's some brushy cover. Um, let's see if we can get some views of the horn larks and maybe find a long spur for Lucky. Along with the horn larks, we were able to pick out a single Lapland long spur. That's a whole bunch of lark. Is there one long spur? I think so. The Lapland long spur is a medium sized bird with a thick bill, streaked sides, rufous patch on the wings, and a smudge on their breast. Frequently found in the Midwest during the winter months, they are tan in coloration with a white stomach and throat and a characteristic cheek patch that is brown to black in color. Breeding males have a black face and chest with a rufous nape. Lapland longspurs are normally found in the United States in winter, with some flocks containing as many as 4 million birds. They can often be seen in mixed flocks with horn larks and snow buntings, feeding on insects and seeds. Breeding occurs in the high arctic with continual daylight in the summer, and males can be known to sing at any hour of the day. The term long spur refers to the elongated claw on the hind toe of this species. While we were only able to pick out one Lapland long spur, horn larks were much more abundant. Right up ahead of us we have two horn larks in the road, and horn larks can be identified by their yellow throat, black mask, and uh, tufts on their head. They're not super easy to pick out, but if you got a close-up look, you can see these feathers sticking out that look like horns. So much like the great horned owl, they're not actual real horns, but they just look like horns, so people call them horned lark, great horned owl. And a lot of the times you'll see them uh, foraging on the side of the roads, especially in the winter, even though they are here in Wisconsin year-round. Cool little bird. They like to scuttle around and walk across the road. They're kind of goofy to watch and a cool bird to check out here in Wisconsin. The horned lark is a small, lively bird that can be found in large flocks throughout North America, depending on the time of year. Although currently common, they have been listed as a species in steep decline. Males are tan in color with a black chest band and mask, yellow throat, white stomach, and a black head stripe that forms small tufts that appear to be horns. Females are similar in color with less sharply defined features. They thrive in fields, tundra, and deserts where they feed on insects and seeds. During breeding season, the females perform a courtship display that looks as though they're taking a dust bath, which can be confusing to males when the females actually are just taking a dust bath. Females will also collect pieces of rock, dirt, corn cob, or manure and create an area that resembles a paved walkway near their nest. The purpose of this paved area is currently under debate. After finding all three of our target species, we cruise the roadside a little bit longer, picking up some other birds that hang out along the roadside during winter. We're moving at about two miles an hour, creeping up on an assorted flock of what looks like tree sparrows and juncos, trying to make sure we can get close enough without having them fly away. And it's delicate. I think we might have done it. In the mixed flock were multiple American tree sparrows and dark-eyed juncos. While cruising the roads, we also found one red-tailed hawk and some pigeons before calling it a day and heading home. Well, at first glance, Wisconsin's farm country may seem desolate in winter. In the right area, it can be an incredible habitat for birds. While we drove the quiet roads of Waukesha County, we encountered many species that call them home. We felt good about locating all three of our target birds and look forward to our next adventure. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Badgerland Birding. Right here is good. Thanks for the lift. Huh. That was interesting. All the stuff last time. Listen, you're in my face. You're really dark. What? There, that's better. Okay. He does whatever it takes. How's it going? Good. He's being pretty cooperative. But I keep rocking back and forth, so it's hard to steady the camera. 
Why are you doing that? Because I'm on like the front of my feet right here. Otherwise, I'm back like this. It's a nice workout. I'm gonna video this tree sparrow. You can't stop me. I, why would I stop you? Oh, he's gone. You stopped me. Why? Well, I didn't do anything. <laughs> you scared him away. <laughs> you spooked my birds. <laughs> yeah, from all the way over here. Yep.